Hello, I'm doing my presentation on oxytocin. Oxytocin is a hormone produced by the pituitary gland that the body naturally produces during spontaneous labor. Pitocin is the man-made version of oxytocin. You can find oxytocin by the trade names of pitocin or synctocinon. Oxytocin is a uterine stimulant that works by increasing the amount of calcium inside the muscle cells of the uterus. The more calcium in the muscle cells, the stronger the contraction. Oxytocin is used for the initiation and improvement of uterine contractions. Therefore, it is used in the induction of labor for patients that have a medical indication for the initiation of labor, such as RH problems, preeclampsia at or near term, maternal diabetes, premature rupture of membranes. Oxytocin is also used to stimulate contractions in an incomplete or inevitable abortion to empty the uterus. It can also be used to strengthen or augment contractions in the first and second stage of labor if labor is not progressing well. For example, if the contraction is not coming frequently enough or forcefully enough to dilate the cervix and move the baby down the birth canal. After the baby is born, oxytocin is given to help in the third stage of labor, the delivery of the placenta. It is also given to control postpartum bleeding and hemorrhage. A patient that is receiving oxytocin is most likely receiving it as an immediate medical situation. Therefore, it is the nurse's responsibility to teach the patient about oxytocin, why it is used, the goals of treatment, and any side effects that they may experience. For example, I would say, you have been prescribed oxytocin. Then I would assess the patient's knowledge of oxytocin. Maybe they've heard of it before. Then I would explain that oxytocin is a uterine stimulant that helps to increase the intense duration and frequency of uterine contractions. I would explain that we will be adjusting the dose every 30 minutes or so until we have established a normal contraction pattern. Our goal is a contraction that lasts 60 seconds every 2 to 3 minutes. During this time, we'll be monitoring her and her baby very closely. I would also explain that in rare cases, women have experienced allergic reactions or nausea and vomiting, and to notify me if they... Current research indicates that low-risk, nulliparous women who are admitted before active labor commences have a higher incidence of being prescribed oxytocin to augment labor and deliver via cesarean section than women who have been admitted in active labor. In a sample of 216 low-risk nulliparous women, 114 were admitted for pre-active labor, and of these women, 84.5% were prescribed oxytocin to accelerate dilation. Oxytocin is a high-risk drug and has been linked to adverse preventable prenatal outcomes and longer labor and higher health care costs. Therefore, there is an outstanding need for evidence-based, standardized admitting guidelines for low-risk, nulliparous women in spontaneous labor to help decrease the use of oxytocin and increase the number of vaginal births. Oxytocin is contraindicated if there is fetal stress, the baby is premature, if the fetus is in an unfavorable position, for example, a transverse lie, or if there's evidence of a cord prolapse. It is contraindicated if a mother has a partial or total placenta previa, an unripe cervix, severe eclampsia or preeclampsia, if the mother has a predisposition of uterine rupture, for example, if she's a nulliparous over 35 years of age, if she's a multigravidia um, of four or more, or has had previous major surgery to the cervix or uterus. Maternal side effects of oxyto oxytocin include nausea and vomiting, cardiac arrhythmia, postpartum hemorrhage, premature ventricular contractions, anaphylactic reaction, and hyperstimulation, hypercontractibility of the uterus.
hyperstimulation of the uterus is defined as a single contraction lasting two minutes or more, or five or more contractions in a 10 minute period. Hyperstimulation of the uterus can cause impairment to your placental blood flow and result in uterine rupture, placental abruptio, rapid labor leading to lacerations of the uterus, vagina, and perineum, and fetal hypoxia. It can also lead to water intoxication, which presents as nausea, vomiting, hypotension, tachycardia, and cardiac arrhythmia when oxytocin administered too quickly. Nursing implications for hyperstimulation of the uterus include monitoring contractions and fetal heart rate. If contractions last more than 60 seconds, occur more than every two minutes, or a resting time between contractions is not sufficient, the nurse should turn off the Pitocin, lay the mom on the left side to increase your placental blood flow, administer oxygen, monitor feed or heart rate, and notify the physician. Side effects of oxytocin for the fetus are mainly associated with hypercontractibility of the uterus, which can cause a decrease in uteroplacental oxygen supply to the baby. It can also cause a decrease in fetal heart rate. Side effects also include trauma from rapid birth and jaundice when oxytocin is administered for augmentation of labor in the first and second stages of labor. Nursing implications for commencing an oxytocin infusion include documenting the neonate's baseline fetal heart rate. In order to get an accurate baseline, the nurse should apply the fetal monitor and assess the baby's heart rate tracing for 15 to 20 minutes. For labor induction, oxytocin is administered intravenously. The nurse should add 10 units of Pitocin to 1,000 milliliters of intravenous solution. Using an IV pump, start the infusion at 0.5 to 1 milliunit per minute and increase by 2 milliunits per minute every 40 to 60 minutes. Alternatively, start at 1 to 2 milliunits per minute and increase by one milliunit per minute every 15 minutes. The goal of treatment are contractions that last one minute or less every two to three minutes. For postpartum bleeding, 10 units of Pitocin is given intramuscularly, or 10 to 20 units of Pitocin is added to an 1,000 milliliter intravenous solution at a rate to control bleeding. In an inevitable or incomplete abortion, oxytocin is usually administered after suction or DNC. Patients are given 10 units of Pitocin in 500 milliliters of intravenous solution. The nursing implications for increasing the rate of oxytocin to establish a normal contraction pattern include checking fetal heart rate, maternal blood pressure and pulse, the frequency and duration of contractions, and resting time of the uterus between contractions before increasing the rate. Then record the IV rate on the monitor strip and in the patient's chart. Well, I hope you found my presentation on oxytocin informative and helpful. Thank you so much for your time.